Hello, everybody. Aviva here from the Monday.com team. We are just about to start our new features webinar, February 2024. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we are just about ready to get started. So let's begin. And as I said, welcome to today's new feature webinar, where we'll be showing you all of the new and exciting features that we've released this past month. My name is Aviva, and I'm a customer experience advocate here at Monday.com. I'd also like to introduce my colleagues, Victoria and Ahuva, who will be supporting today's webinar and answering questions for all of you behind the scenes. So feel free to send in your questions via the Q&A section. Important to mention that the Q&A section is where we'll be taking the questions, not the chat. Uh, so post your questions in the Q&A section as they come up because these wonderful ladies are here to help answer them right away. Thanks, Victoria and Ahuva. We really appreciate you being here. Before we begin, I hope that you can all see my screen and hear me, but if that's not the case, at any point, please let us know by writing in the Q&A section as well, and we will get it resolved as quickly as possible. Additionally, if you have to step away at any point during the webinar, no worries, the session will be recorded for you to watch at your leisure. It will also be available on the Monday.com Academy from next week. Today's session will be made up of two parts. Firstly, we'll take a look at our new features in action, and then we'll move into a live Q&A to answer all of your questions. So throughout the demo, the webinar, please be sure to add your questions in the dedicated Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen, instead of the general chat. As I mentioned, we're not going to be uh, monitoring the chat section. We will try to get to as many questions as we can, that being said, there are a lot of us here today and we're from all over the world. So it's really exciting to see such an international audience. So this being said, if we don't get to your specific question, please feel free to check out our user community page at community.monday.com. And it's possible someone else has already asked the question there and, and has it answered. Additionally, if we do not get to your question, you could also email us your question to support at monday.com and one of our support agents will get back to you as soon as possible. Finally, you'll be emailed a recording of today's session with our CSAT survey in three business days. So without further ado, let's jump right in and look at today's agenda. We have some really exciting updates to cover today. Specifically, we have sub-item improvements, which includes conditional coloring, expand collapse all sub-items, as well as pinning sub-item columns. We have automation improvements, which includes new sub-item automation trigger, as well as a unified automation and integration center. We have some new Monday work doc features, which of course we will see shortly. We also have some improvements for managing users for admins. This includes batch action SSO reset, as well as the ability to update users' email addresses from a CSV file. When looking at our mobile app, we're gonna look at some really cool new UI for our mobile app user interface. We will then be learning about our shift to being a multi-product company specifically with the release of Work Canvas from Beta. And finally, lastly, we will speak about the app of the month, which is Smart Insights AI, and we'll take a deeper look into that as well. So, of course, at the end, we'll have our Q&A session as well. So let's dive straight into our Monday.com account to look at all of these exciting features. So I've created here, this is my board, I like to cook, so this is Aviva's catering business. And I'll just explain what I've set up. I've got my customer names. I hope you like the names. I thought long and hard about them. And then each item, each user is has sub-items, and my sub-items are representing the dishes that my customers have purchased. So through my board, I will show you examples, and we will discuss the new features in action. So the first thing I wanted to show you today is the improvements we've made to our sub-items. Sub-items are, of course, a core building block of a Monday.com board. And as part of a larger goal of providing our users, you all, with the same functionality for sub-items and items, we've made a few improvements in the last month. 
So these were all highly requested features for sub-items that we have now very excitingly brought to fruition. The first functionality is conditional coloring, which we're going to find here and I'll show you in a moment. Conditional coloring allows you to define colored highlighting on your items and sub-items based on dedicated rules. I'd like to note at this point that the rules you define for items and sub-items are totally separated. This means that item rules won't apply for sub-items and vice versa to prevent conflicts and to give you an excellent user experience. So for example, like I said, here is my board where I'm managing my catering business. And in my board, I want to have a visual representation of what I sold. And I would also like to highlight when I've made a really big sale. In my small business, I consider over five products in one sale uh, a really good sale. So what I'll do here is go into my color conditioning. I can choose my color here. So I've chosen the color green because for me, green is money, green is success. You can choose here if you want to highlight your cell or your entire row. I want to hi highlight my entire row. And here you can see now you can choose from your sub item color, uh, columns. And I'm going to select number of items sold, my numbers column in the sub items. And I'm going to say when the number is greater than five. So then I would like to, it to be highlighted in green. And we can see this here in action in my board. You can see John Doe. He very excitingly purchased seven of my apple pies, and I can see that shown very nicely here in green. So that is our first sub-item improvement. The next feature that I'm also super excited about, it's small, but it's powerful, the ability to expand and collapse all sub-items. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my sub-items. You can see all my items are closed. I'm gonna go here to my three dots. I'm going to say expand. I can expand either just this item or all items. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand all of my items. And as you can see conveniently, all of my sub items from all my items on the board have been expanded. And we can go ahead and do the same thing to collapse, collapse all items. This ability to expand and collapse also has keyboard shortcuts for easy access. For anyone who wants to know, it's either Control-I on PC or Command-I on your Mac. It's important to note that this setting of expand and collapse all sub-items is saved per view and per user. This means that the settings that you have for all your sub-items or expanded or collapsed, it won't affect another user or your account. It won't affect another team member. Uh, or another view. The third sub-item feature I'd like to show you is the ability to pin sub-item columns. So here again, and you can see here, pin columns. Now, what is this all about? This is helpful when you have a board with a lot of sub-item columns and you want to always be able to see a specific column, which might be more on the left of the board. So in this case, you can see I don't have a lot of columns, but if I were to have a lot of columns and I would need to scroll right, I could now, which we could before just pin items, I can now go to my sub items and I can pin and I can choose from my sub item columns. For example, if I want to see again the number of items that I've sold always pinned to my left hand side, I can go ahead and pin that. So this can also be saved to the current view or be saved as a new view. So for example, I can pin let's say the number of items sold, and I'm just going to save it to this view. Staying with our sub item topic, but moving over to automations, let's now move over to our automation center to show you a very exciting trigger that we've introduced. So here I am in my automation center. I'm going to create a custom automation. And the new trigger is, You'll see now when sub item is created. This was a very requested uh, automation trigger, and we're super excited to be introducing it to you. So, in my example for my catering business, I'm going to say when a sub item is created, change status. So, I'm going to set the status. You can select either your item status or your sub item status. I'm going to go ahead and choose my sub item status and I'm gonna change it to in progress. So that means every time a new sub item is created in my board, the status will automatically be in progress, meaning I still need to deal with the order. Maybe I haven't finalized the sale yet. I'm gonna go ahead and create this automation and let's see it in action. 
So let's create another item here. Let's say pizza, whatever you like. <laughs> let's check our status column. And beautiful, we see our automation has worked well. A new item was automatically set to in progress. So speaking of automations, let's go back and take a look at our newly combined automation and integration center up here. Until now, you would need to navigate to either the automation or integration center, depending on what you needed. Gone are those days. Now we have conveniently combined the two to give you the ultimate all-in-one experience. So whether you're looking to add an automation or an integration to your board, all you need to do is click on automate or integrate. For example, I'll click on integrate and you'll be taken to the all new unified automation and integration center. In addition to now having a one-stop shop for all your automation and integration needs, we've also made some significant improvements to the center. These include a five times faster loading time of board automations over here, as well as new filters and improved search to find your automation. Okay, so for the next three features, we are going to navigate to a Monday work doc. If you are not familiar with work docs, I've simply gone here to my plus sign and I've added a new doc. So we're gonna go speak about our exciting features added to docs. For anyone who hasn't used docs before, Monday work docs, it is a central place for you and your team to collaborate, brainstorm, plan and execute. So forget your notebook, close your Google Doc and toss away all your sticky notes because Monday Work Docs allows you to achieve everything you need and more from right here within your monday.com account. So we've made several improvements to our Work Docs. Let's take a look. The first improvement is the ability to mention a doc within another doc. So you can see here, it says write something or type forward slash for more options. I will do a forward slash. You can see you've given have been given some options. You can also go to more options. You can also just type. So I'm going to type doc. And you can see here, I can mention a doc. Now it's bringing up all my other work docs that I have, and I can choose one of them, and it'll be added here. Now, this feature could be useful, for example, for a team creating a project summary and they need to reference specific work docs for each milestone of their project. So here is a convenient way that they'll be able to see which document is being referred to in our main doc. Another new work doc feature I'd like to show you is the ability to add an image caption. So as you can see, I've already added an image. I've gone here. I've added an image from my computer. And as you can see, I've added my little caption here. So to do so, you can see we have this little menu here. Because I already have a caption, I can now choose to hide it. Or you can choose to show a caption. This is really nice if you say want to have a specific name for an image, describe an image. Um, it's a really nice little feature that we've added. Um, I'd also like to add here that this caption text editor also supports other basic work doc features, including text formatting, copy pasting, collaborative features, and undo redo with version history. The third work doc improvement that we've made is the ability to add a customized table size. Again, we're going to go here. Let's go down. We're going to do our forward slash. Again, you can go to the more options, but for me, I prefer typing. I'm going to select table. And you can see now we have the ability to add a customized table size. Now, when, it, when adding a table to your work doc, you'll be able to select the exact table size according to your specifications. This is a real game changer for all of your table related needs. We see here, I can select the exact number of rows that I need. Really cool. So guys, I know we've already done a couple of features. I'd like to take a second and see who's still with us. So let's post an emoji in the chat if you're still with us. Oh, beautiful. I love, love the emojis, loving it. Okay, <laughs> it's great to see that you're all with us and everyone is in good spirits. Awesome, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.
So now that we've all expressed our emotions through our emojis, let's move on to two features which are relevant for all of you account admins out there. The first feature I'll be speaking about is the ability for account admins to batch action reset their team's SSO. So let's see, I've got a little video here and you can see what this would look like from an admin's user management section. You can see the admin is filtering their CRM users, their batch ac ac action selecting everyone, and they're resetting their SSO. Previously, this would have had to be done one by one, so this useful feature will save admins a lot of valuable time. And as they say, time is money. Another excellent improvement added to the admin section is the ability to update a user's email address from a CSV file. Gone are the days of endless hours spent updating users' individual email addresses one by one. Now, account admins have the ability to import CSV that will update the email addresses in just a few easy clicks. So you can see here, there will be an option, these three dots on the right, for an admin to import data from CSV a very user-friendly window will pop up showing you where you can upload your file and then to choose the current emails, what you'd like to replace, and then choosing the new emails. And then it will direct you to successfully update the emails. Again, saves us a lot of time, which is very exciting. The next feature I'd like to speak about is a big improvement to our mobile app. Our product team has put a lot of effort and love into creating an entirely new UI user interface for our mobile app. This new design was created to give the app a more up-to-date and appealing look. It's important for me to mention that there are no UX, no user experience changes, but only UI, user interface. So great job to the team. So we've now finished all of the features related to Monday.com that you know and love. I'd now like to move on to an exciting company update. Monday.com is now officially a multi-product company. So what does this mean? This means that we've now officially launched our three standalone products, Work Management, Sales CRM, and Monday Dev. We've also included in this Work Canvas, which we'll be taking a closer look at shortly. So you can now purchase each one of these products separately. To find out more, you can visit the website listed at the bottom of the screen. We also have some add-ons that are now being offered, and some examples of these would be premium support and the emails and activities app. Speaking of products, I'm excited to dive into one of our new products, which just got released from beta, and it is Work Canvas. So I'm going to navigate to my Work Canvas account. Now, for those of us who are new to Work Canvas, myself included, Work Canvas is an incredible product that allows teams to collaborate, create, and innovate on a digital whiteboard made for work. It also integrates with your Monday.com boards, allowing you to move from ideation to execution seamlessly. You can see here, Work Canvas is very user-friendly, very clear, and it's pretty simple to get started. Another cool feature of Work Canvas is that you have the option to work offline. So regardless of whether you have an internet connection or not, you can continue to work. And when you do have an internet connection, everything will sync. Pretty incredible. You can see here, if you're not sure how to begin, you can go to your templates library where you can see so many cool templates. So for example, let's select our goal setting board. So you can see here, it's really easy for anybody to get started. I'd also like to mention that the whiteboards here are limitless. So you have an unlimited amount of space on each of your boards. Now, not only is Work Canvas an amazing product on its own, Work Canvas and Monday, as I mentioned before, they also integrate, which really sets it apart from other similar tools. 
This allows you to import tasks from your Monday board to a canvas. You gain the power of visualizing the information you're managing in Monday and an, and an unlimited canvas, as well as having your data updated from any place, either from your board or from a canvas. So let's see what's possible a bit with the Work Canvas integration. So as I mentioned, we have our Monday.com integration, which I'm clicking on here. And you can see we have the option to import items. And I'm going to import my famous catering business. I'm importing the board to my Work Canvas. You can see here I have my items, my clients in this case. And I'm going to add John Doe to my Canvas. You can see I can play around with it. I can zoom out. Well, that's zooming out a lot. Let's go back to our John Doe. Oh, excuse me. OK, we've got John Doe here. Let me make him a bit bigger. Now, let's see, I want to, I don't know, organize this in some sort of a way. Again, there's a lot you can do on Work Canvas, so I suggest starting a trial and playing around. But for example, if I wanted to update uh, John Doe's uh, status, I can do so from Canvas. So I'll go here. I'm changing it from working on it to sold. That's great. Uh, John Doe has purchased all our products. And we can go back into our Monday account and we can see John Doe was updated to sold. So that's really cool how you can use Work Canvas on its own, or you can integrate it with your monday.com account. So let's go back to our presentation. And I would just like to show you one example of a use case, a real life use case that uh, we have with a customer using Work Canvas. In this use case, our phone provider has used Work Canvas to visualize their in-store mapping. This way, they get a clear visual representation of what their store will look like, which product will go where, maybe what's missing, what needs to be restocked, et cetera. Really cool. So if you already haven't tried it already to work Canvas, I recommend opening a trial account to see how it can make your work even more visual, efficient, and your workflows run smoother than ever before. If you want to learn more about Work Canvas, you can also check out our brand new lesson in the Monday Academy. For all of your monday.com demo and learning needs, I suggest visiting our wonderful monday.com academy. So finally, before we wrap things up, let's head on over to our apps marketplace to go over our app of the month, which is Smart Insights AI. I'm in my platform here, and our apps marketplace can be found by clicking the jigsaw puzzle in the top right corner of your account. There we go. For those of you who don't know or are perhaps less familiar, our apps marketplace is where you can find a range of apps which allow you to expand Monday.com's capabilities. The apps marketplace contains apps developed by third-party developers as well as apps built by the Monday.com team. From here, I'm going to look up Smart Insights AI. I'll just type Smart Insights, and you can see I found my app here. I can add this to all of the workspaces in my account. I can also add it to one specific work case. So this app was designed to gain valuable customer insights and better optimize how you extract and analyze your data using the power of AI. This app is powered by ChatGPT4. So before we go into a quick video about this app, some examples of the app's impressive features include automatically generating tags in a de designated column based on the answers provided in your forms, easy consolidator summary for each question on your existing board on a new dedicated board, and thirdly, create a tailored experience for every user by generating personalized responses based on the feedback they have provided. So let's watch a quick demo video just to give a, a small taste of this powerful app. Hi everyone, my name is Amalia Rubino and I'm a product marketing manager here at Adaptivist for our app Smart Insights for Monday.com. And Smart Insights is our first award-winning AI-powered solution in the marketplace and we're super excited to launch it. So what does this app exactly do? Well, it's the next step in customer interaction and can help you gain valuable insights on your customers and makes it easier than ever before when you have to extract data. So how do we do this? 
Well, this app does this using three features. And the first feature is categorize replies. And this basically allows you to categorize all those incoming responses, whether it's an IT support portal, a survey or questionnaire, and categorize them and structure them much better using a tag column. Our second uh, feature is extracting insights. And this app basically allows you to create a summary from all those responses that are coming in, again, from forms or questionnaires, where you can actually create a summary if you want by individual questions. So it's just much easier when you don't have to actually read through all the responses and you just have one quick summary to when you have to quickly extract insights from it. And then our last feature is getting back to responders. So this is a personalized creation when you want to get back to responders, whether it was someone that answered a form of yours or a questionnaire, and you simply just want to follow up with them. Well, our app allows you to create a custom response that you can later send to them if you want to follow up. And it's so much easier this time because you don't actually have to write it. Our app will write it for you. So sounds great, right? Well, let me show you how it works. Let's begin. So the first thing with every feature, you'll have a pop up box that is letting you know just what each feature um, does for you. So the first one, uh, this feature allows you to automatically generate tags in a designated column that the app will create for you based on the answers that were provided in your form. So this really allows you to categorize and organize your responses in a more structured manner and are much easier to analyze filtering and sorting. So let's go ahead and exit out of this message and let's do our first tag column. So um, you do this by question. So this drop down menu uh, will have the questions that you have in your form. So let's select the first question. How do you currently use AI technology at your workplace? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead with that one and then I need to create the tag column. So we're gonna do that and then just click generate tags. And then once it's loading, as you can see, the tag column has been created and then we're just gonna go to the right and there you have it. So as you can see, the tags have now been created under your tag column and you can go to them anytime you want a quick insight or extract data. So I'm going to pause it there. This is a five minute video. You can feel free to go in at your own leisure and watch uh, this demo, which you can find on YouTube or hear the demo video. So if you have any questions regarding this app, I think it's really cool. Uh, if you need help troubleshooting issues that come up when exploring the app's capabilities, you can head on over to our apps marketplace like I did to the little puzzle piece and you can find the apps page, which we're on here. And then you can reach out to the app developers directly by clicking where you see here, there's a feedback form or you can contact them directly. Okay, so this completes the new, fe new features presentation, the first part of our session, and we'll be moving into the Q&A shortly. So if you haven't had a chance, please be sure to add your question to the Q&A box. I'm going to take a two minute break, feel free to do the same, and then we will get started. So please go ahead and ask away, we'll be right back. Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you all had a nice break, had a sip of water, coffee, whatever you enjoy. And now we're gonna get into your questions and answers. So thank you everybody who submitted a question so far. Again, we will get to as many questions as we can and let's start off. Question number one, are there any other actions that can be applied to all items or sub items at once? So the answer is yes. For example, you can click, and let me go into my account. For example, you can click on Command A or Control A, depending on your computer. So let's do that here, Control A. And as you can see, that has selected all of my items. So this way you can batch action. Uh, you can see here, you've got your different options. And this way we can easily select all our items for a batch action. So thank you very much for that question. Question number two, when you are showing how to access sub item conditional coloring, I noticed there were a couple of other features there. Can you please walk us through them? Not sure I've ever used them. So great question, thank you very much. 
We're going to go here to our three dots that you mentioned. Okay, we spoke about pinning. We spoke about the color conditioning. This here is item height, and we can go into our item height. You can see here I've got my item height selected as single, but we could do double, okay, depending on what you prefer. We could also go ahead and do triple. And as you can see, it changes the height. So I'm going to go back to my single. And then the next thing we didn't cover is item default values. So this is a really nifty feature. If, for example, you're adding items to your board, and let's say I, because I'm a small business, it's just me, owner and worker of one, but I like to be organized and I want to, every time an item is created, always assign myself. So here in the item default value, I'm going to let, select the person as myself and save changes. So you'll see then, thanks to the item default value, once it's finished loading, I'm going to create a new item. And as you can see, I was automatically added, thanks to the item default value, as the person in charge. So there are those features, and that was a great question. Thank you very much. The next question. Love this webinar. Oh, thank you. You're too sweet. I always have ideas of changes I'd love to see implemented into the platform. Where can I share this with your team? Guys, all your questions are amazing, and this is also a great point. So I would recommend going to community.monday.com, and I will show you here what it looks like. Okay. This is our community site. From here, you can log in, and you can search or submit feature requests, your product ideas, your feedback. Like it says here, tell us about your dream features and vote to be heard. So here, as, as it said, as I explained, you can add your feature request, or if you search and you found someone else already requested it, you can upvote it. And at the end of every quarter, our product team actually takes a look at our community page and use these uh, most requested, most voted features to implement into the platform. So you, as our users, you truly have uh, power to make an impact. So if you'd like to suggest a feature, please, I really recommend going and utilizing our community page. Thank you so much. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Thank you for sharing all the new features related to sub items. I feel it was very much needed, but how do I check all the automation options that can be used with sub items? Great question. So we wanna see which automations are available for sub items. So firstly, we're gonna to navigate to our beautiful automation integration center. You can see here we have the search bar and I'm going to type in sub item. As you can see here, uh, we're getting the results and we can scroll down all the supported recipes related to sub items. So you can also go here and you can see the different uh, categories of automation recipes. Uh, you can also utilize the search bar for that. Okay, let's move on to the next question. When pinning columns, is that unique to the individual user or will it apply to all users? This is a great question. And the answer is it will apply to all users once it is saved to a specific view. So I can show you here. I'm going to pin something. I've already got things pinned. Let's also pin some things from our item columns. And I'm going to save it to this view. So this view is called table. I've got our main table and we've got this table where my pinned items are saved. So anyone who's invited to your board will be able to see this view. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Will sub item conditional formatting display on the parent line if it is summarized? Parent items and sub items have separate conditional coloring. So what does this mean? Even if the sub item is rolled up onto the parent item, 
it will not display on the parent item. So they work separately to give you the best experience possible. Okay. Um, I see here we've received a lot of questions regarding Work Canvas. Um, is Work Canvas included in Monday accounts? How can I get it? Pricing, there's a lot of questions here. So I'd firstly like to say that um, Ahuva and Victoria will now be posting in the chat box the link to the Work Canvas deep dive website where you can really go in there you can see more about all about Work Canvas, including pricing features and adding it. And uh, I will say that, as we said, uh, Monday.com is now a multi-product company. Work Canvas is a product of its own, meaning you can lose, use it as a work alone product or you can use it integrated with Monday.com. All right, the next question here is related to our Monday Docs. Okay, can Monday Docs be incorporated to boards or dashboards? The answer is yes. So on a board, you can add a Monday Doc to a file column and to a Monday Doc column. In the files column, you can create a new doc or pull an existing one. So let's see this in action. I'm going to go to my little plus sign. I'm going to add column and I'm going to add a files column. In the files column, you can see I've got some options. I can add a file from the computer, from webcam, doc, link, Google Drive, et cetera, et cetera. And here I can also select one of my docs. So there we go. And there's my doc that we spoke about before. And beautiful, I now have my doc sitting conveniently in my files column on my board. You can also add it to a Monday uh, doc column. So I'll add that to Monday doc. Okay. Uh, sorry, this is cr creating a new Monday doc. But what you can also do is add, sorry, um, you can add a doc via the Monday doc column as well. Okay, uh, next question. Can I create automations from one dashboard to another? So just to make sure we're on the same page, on the whole, our automations can be built on the boards, not on the dashboards. Okay, so then if the question is whether we can automate some processes across the board, the answer is yes. Uh, and I'll show you an example of a cross-board automation. So first of all, I'll duplicate our board. Uh, I'll just keep that as a duplicate just to show you uh, some cross-board automations. Sorry, let's put them next to one another. Okay, so from my catering business board, I'm going to go into automations. I'm going to create a custom automation and I'm going to select, let's see here, Let's do when an item is created, then create an item in another board. So when I create an item on my catering business board, I'm also going to, now this is called item mapping, where we go in and we select, first of all, which board. So catering. Okay, so we want an item when it's created in this board, an item to also be created in my duplicate board, for example. And the item mapping means we're going to click on the item. We're going to map out what information we want to display. For example, the name column here will also be the name column in the other board, etc. Make sure the mapping is okay. And let's see this in action. So I'm going to create my item here. Let's go to March sales and we will do Sarah Sanders. Okay, remember 
our trigger was when an item is created, we're going to create an item on another board. We see our item default value, if you remember, we spoke about automatically assign me as the person. Now let's go to our second board. And let's see, here we go, Sarah Sanders. Now she was added to a different group. You can always change that in the item mapping uh, or decide if you want your item to go to a specific group in your second board. But we can see here, thanks to our cross-board automation, I had my client, Sarah Sanders, added in this board. And at the exact same time, she was also added to my second board. Okay, let's go back to the questions. All right, is there an automation to create a board by duplicating another board? All right, so great question. And the answer is we have an option to create a board from a template. So first of all, let's see how we make a board into a template. I'm going to click on those three dots next to my catering business board. And we can see here, I can save as a template, meaning I uh, want to save it. I want to use the same board structure. Let's say your board structure is a little bit more intricate than mine. Uh, you don't have to repeat this every time. So you can save it as a template. You can see now you've got the little wand there and you can say it it's, when you hover over it, it says this board is a template. Um, now let's go into our automations center and you can see here, let's create another automation. So let's do when status changes to something, then we're going to create a board from a template. So I'm going to do when my status changes to stuck. Let's say in my business, if something is stuck, um, then I want a new board to be created for whatever you know use case, just for an example to show you the capabilities. So when my status changes to stuck, then I'd want to create a new board from a template. Uh, you can see you can choose which board you would like to choose from. I'm going to search for catering. Aviva's catering business, there you go. You can change the name, whatever you want the board to be named. Um, let's just add test so we can see this in action. All right. Remember, our trigger will be when the status changes to stack, then we're going to create a whole new board from the template. So let's try this and see what happens. OK, I'm changing my status. Let's say Sarah, Sarah is stuck. Oh no, we need to help her. She needs her own board. Let's see what happens over here. We should see a new board. There we go, beautiful. We have our new board test. That's what we named it. If we go into it, we can see it has, once it's load, uh, we can see it has the exact board structure of my catering business. So this is a way that you can utilize uh, templates and automations together. All right, so another week question we have is, you mentioned app of the month, are these apps a part of Monday? So I'd like to note that some of these apps were created within Monday. Many of them were also created by external third-party developers. So if we navigate back into our apps marketplace here on the top right, um, let's just go into Smart Insights, what we spoke about before. Let's go into here. And as, as I showed you before, you can see a lot of information about the app here. Uh, this includes an overview, what we spoke about, the features, the basic, you know, um, cool features, what, what, it's, what this app is going to give you, the pricing. And some of these you'll be able to see you have an option to pay on monday.com for a some of the apps, not all of them. We do have an option to pay for the app on Monday. So you have your overview, your pricing, security and compliance, as well as permissions. And as I showed you before, you can always navigate to the bottom, look for a feedback form, 
look for contact us and there will always be a way for you to directly contact the app developer. Okay, great question, guys. Keep them coming. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. I noticed that I can't build some automations in the builder, which I see my colleagues are using. How can this happen? All right, so in the template center, there are some unique recipes that can't be built in the custom builder. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back to our automation center, you can see here we have our different automation categories. So let's, for example, go to status change. Okay, on top you will have, you'll see all the integrations. And when you move down, each block represents an automation recipe. Uh, that is, supports status change. So these are considered built-in recipes. All right, what we were doing before in our board automations, when I was showing you the examples, this is considered, you know, when we start from scratch, when we add an automation, this is considered a custom automation. But when we go here to our templates center and we go through the different categories, Let's look at recurring. These can be pretty useful in many use cases. For example, every time period duplicate a group. Um, you know, these are considered built-in automations. So many times, if you perhaps watch a Monday demo video, you see an automation recipe used there as an example, but you can't create it in your custom automation area. This is probably because not all triggers that are available in built recipes will also be available in custom automation recipes. So if you're trying to build a recipe and you can't find it, I would recommend taking a look here at our built-in automation recipes. So, you know, as they say, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, this nearly, nearly one hour together uh, for me, at least, went by super fast. I know that there were a lot of questions and we were probably not able to get through all of them. And um, what I wanted to say is that no worries if your question was not answered tonight or this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are in the world, please, please feel free always to send in all of your questions, concerns, comments to support at monday.com. One of our dedicated agents will be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. Like I mentioned, you can also visit our wonderful uh, community, monday.com community at community.monday.com. Perhaps your question has already been answered or perhaps your feature has already been requested. So I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for joining us tonight, for taking the time. We are so happy that you're here with us, uh, that we share a mutual love for Monday. And we hope to see you more on our future webinars. And please feel free, as I said, to reach out at any time with all your questions. We are here to help you. I wanted again to thank my wonderful colleagues, Victoria and Ahuva, who have been on the question and answer section tonight. Thank you both. I couldn't have done it without you. And we hope to see you all again soon. Thanks again for joining and good afternoon, good evening, good morning, or good night. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.